Enter Brunelleschi, a small, talented, but hot-headed man who's born to be a sculptor. A sculptor? Oh, <laughs> uh, no. He actually started as a sculptor, but wasn't content being second best, so he quit completely and got into... Architecture. The cathedral in Florence was nearly complete, but had a giant hole for a roof. No architect at the time knew how to span the gap or how to make a dome that big be sustainable. Brunelleschi didn't even get the job initially, but no one else had any ideas left. And considering Brunelleschi wouldn't disclose his idea until he got the job, they eventually just gave in. The dome itself ultimately took 16 years to build. Well, let's talk about someone who is not a sociopath. Gustav Eiffel was born December 15, 1832. He made his name by making bridges for the French Railroad Network. He also helped design the Statue of Liberty. The Eiffel Tower was started January 28, 1887, and was completed in 1889 for the Exposition Universelle of 1889. The World's Fair, held in Paris, France, from May 6 to October 31st, so I was talking with Miriam Levine, who said that the Eiffel Tower was created to commemorate the revolution? This is true. Gustav Eiffel was the most epic architect that has ever walked this earth. Really? Let me tell you a little story. During my visit to Florence, I was eyeing the skyline when something caught my eye. Upon further investigation, I came upon the Cathedral of Florence. But the cathedral itself was not of importance to me. I instead had my eye on something much more important. There was nothing wrong with the cathedral in and of itself, but I knew there was something much better if I could get to the top. And then I saw it. The Duomo. As soon as I laid eyes on it, I knew I wanted to get to the top of that thing and see the view. As I approached it, I knew for sure it was the tallest thing Florence had ever seen. I bet from the top of it you could see the entire city. In my haste, I tried to get to the top as fast as possible, knowing that the interlocking bricks that Brunelleschi had put in place would hold my weight. But I got ahead of myself. As Ross King said in his book, watching the dome rise above the city was the most enduring and breathtaking spectacle of the age. I felt like the artist J.R. working amongst the rooftops. From the outside, I could almost make out the vertical ribcage that held the Duomo up. From afar, the outer shell of the Duomo looked beautiful, but up close, I could see that there were plenty of things for me to climb on. Brunelleschi also utilized an ingenious pulley and crane system, the most similar to what we have today that the world had ever seen. In fact, Brunelleschi got such fame from this that he was the only person buried under the cathedral itself. According to ReadsItaly.com, it's not bad for someone who set out to be a sculptor. I can't wait to see the view from up here. I bet it gives you the best perspective in Florence. Oh, you want to talk about perspective? Well, I went down to the Eiffel Tower last week. And you see that horizontal line? I like to call that level the Duomo level. Why? Because it's low. Don't mind when you see me smoking. It, it, it has been CGI'd in. Well, I was able to get exclusive access to the Eiffel Tower by myself. Recently, I was talking to Miriam Levine, who brilliantly said the World's Fair of 1889 was aimed at economical, social, and moral change. The architecture, and especially the Eiffel Tower, proved to be the most impressive means at hand. See, now we are on the Duomo level. Do you guys like it? Doesn't it feel like you are on top of the world? Not really. How would you guys like to go a little bit higher? Just a little bit. She also threw out a joke saying that the Eiffel Tower spread its iron fever across the nation. A couple weeks ago I came here and some guy fell off. And died because and I, I told I thought they would eventually put a barrier so people don't fall out the elevators, but they didn't. Oh well. Back on track. She also said art is transcendent. Anything can be art, and art can symbolize anything.
Well, I kind of got a little bit lost. Uh, does the Duomo have a restaurant? <laughs> I think not! Granted, it, the Eiffel Tower doesn't have a fantastic restaurant. I mean, it's not even good. But it has a restaurant! According to Mopassant, no matter where you are in the city, no matter if it's snow, rain, or shine, you cannot escape the Eiffel Tower. The only place you can escape the Eiffel Tower is on the tower itself. Well, I was talking with Roland Barthes, and he said that the tower has always been blamed for being an utterly useless monument. God damn it, I hate elevator music. Another elevator, really? Oh, God. The last time I came up here, I just climbed this thing manually. That didn't go so well. Anyways, that may be true. The tower may be an utterly useless monument, but what would Paris be without it? Ah, uh, see, look at that. Isn't that beautiful? And we're still not even at the top. Now that gives you some perspective. Goddamn elevators. Come on. Well, many people believe that it participates in no right, in no cult, and not even in art. You cannot visit the tower as a museum, and there's nothing to see inside the tower. Nevertheless, the tower does receive twice as many visitors as the Louvre. Yeah, who likes paintings? Well, then, why did you visit the tower? To get nothing but a new perspective of Paris. Also, I needed to map out Paris for Pokemon, but that's another story. I'm not even in an elevator! Finally here. At 324 meters, no man has ever been so high before. I believe you've heard of Franz the Flying Tailor, or Parachute Dude, who jumped off the Duomo level and died. I was gonna one-up him. You think you could do that? I think not. Yeah, after I jumped, I was like, what am I doing? This was a horrible idea. But luckily, I survived. I hope you enjoyed this educational video about the Duomo. And the Eiffel Tower. We'll, we'll see, see you, you next time. time.